Mic check one two. Mic check one two. Here we go. Here we go. Hey everybody. Good afternoon to people in the Midwest and on the East Coast. Good morning to people on the West Coast. Uh, yeah, it's still morning. And uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to everyone else around the world. How's it going, guys? This is hashtag TNT JoFi Tech News that Jerome Ortega finds interesting. Episode something something because I lost count. This is also day something something in quarantine. How's everybody doing? Hope uh, you're doing well. It's actually a really really nice day here in Chicago. Um. I know it's late. I know it's what time is it? 1:10 p.m. right now. Uh and I should have started streaming an hour ago, but um I was up until like 4:30 or something last night cuz I was working on another video for my other channel and I just yeah. So, uh woke up late and then worked out late and yeah, I'm an hour behind. So, let me let me get into chat here. Let me say hi to everybody. Um and then I you know, real quick, I I want to shout out Levin. So, if you guys uh are looking at Levin's name, his name is in green and he has a red Chicago uh star next to his name that's a badge. And uh the reason I'm I'm calling Levin out is because um he ended up being a member, a YouTube member. Uh, and that's why he has a badge next to his name. And uh, Levin, I didn't get a chance to thank you. I don't know when you did that, if that was yesterday, but uh, I appreciate you joining the channel. I appreciate you being a member and I appreciate the continued support. It, it does mean a lot to me, Levin. So thank you so much and and welcome. And, and real quick guys, uh, if you wanna be a member, and this is something that I'll just plug, I'm not gonna try to plug it too often, but um, if you guys wanna be a member, all it takes, it's, it's 99 cents a month uh, starting and then there are different tiers. If you do a higher tier, then you know you get different perks. But at 99 cents a month, you'll get a, a badge next to your name too. Your name will be green and um, you know you get to support me. You get to use like certain emoji and just, yeah. So you can click the join button or uh, you can, if you can't find that join button, you can also go to youtube.com forward slash phone drone forward slash join. So uh, I'll leave it at that. 
and um, let me go back into the comments. Let me say hi and say what's up to everybody. So uh, I see Max Tech Studios here. Can I please be a moderator? <laughs> I, I have two moderators at this point, Max, and I don't have that many people in here. Um, if if this channel ever grows, if it ever does, I don't know if it will, um, but I'll consider it. But I uh, appreciate you wanting to even be one. So, um, you know, I don't have that many people in here. So, uh, again, when that changes, then we'll talk about it. Anyway, Max, uh, thanks for making the stream. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, I also see Hamed Al -Sh uh, Shamsi in here. Kind of disappointed with the Velvet's price. Kind of. I'm really disappointed with the Velvet's price. And not only am I disappointed, but it it scares me to think about what this is going to do for the Pixel 5. Since the Pixel 5 is going to have the same chipset as the LG Velvet, a $730 price point. Well, but yeah, it, it rubs me the wrong way too, but we'll talk about that um, in a second. I think that's my first story, actually. So um let me scroll down here. Uh, Levin says, all good on my end, just on the grind. I hear you, man. I hear you. Uh, Max, you're from Wisconsin. That's awesome. What part? Uh, you're not too far from me then. You know, I, I don't know if you know that. I'm, I'm in Chicago. So just FYI. Um, yeah, Hamid uh, is saying getting hold of time in quarantine is tough. Yeah. Mint Arcade. Ho. Oh. Mint Arcade. How's it going, man? How you doing? Uh, Thanks for making the stream. Appreciate you stopping by. I know it's super late for you, Mint Arcade. I'm so sorry. Again, I didn't mean to stream this late, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, uh, I see uh, Will in here too. Um, Will, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Uh, Will and I were just chatting a little bit earlier. Uh, glad you could make it, man. Appreciate you stopping by. Um, did I miss anyone? <laughs> Mint Arcade sleepy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. Tomorrow. Um, wait, is tomorrow Friday? Yeah. Tomorrow I will, I will stream earlier for sure. I promise you that. I, I think, I think, um, Will says, is that 765 chip the same as the pixel five? Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that the, the 765 chip that's in the LG velvet is going to be the same exact one in the pixel five. Um, I don't know if it's going to be any different, uh, as far as, um, like if it's going to be a plus or anything like that, but I doubt it. Uh, oh shit. And, uh, Hamid, uh, Al Shamsi is, uh, a, a YouTube member. Hey, uh, first of all, congrats. Uh, second of all, thank you, man. Thank you for being a, a member of whatever this is called the YouTube membership. So, um, like Levin and actually Levin, I didn't have a chance to do that, but Levin and Hamed, I'll be putting your names on the intro and outro to my live streams. And then, uh, if you guys check, there's a community tab as well. And, um, you know, I'll be posting in there and now you guys can use those certain emojis or whatever. And so, yeah, go ahead. Use those perks. I'm glad you guys could be members. I appreciate it. Uh, I was going to say too, um, I know will you're, you're, um, I know you had done Patreon, but this might be a better version if you were ever thinking of it. No pressure. I'm just, I'm just saying. So, uh, Hamid, man, thank you for the support. I appreciate that, man. It means a lot to me. It really does. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Will is saying Pixel 5, 899. Stop. It's not going to be 900 bucks. It's not going to be 900 bucks. Not, not, nowhere close. Nowhere close. Um, God damn it, Will. Don't do not do this to me. Brian's in here too. What up, everyone? What up, Brian? How's it going, man? Uh, appreciate you stopping by. I also see Big House in here too. Um, Big House Productions. Hey, everyone. Hey, Big House. How's it going, man? Actually, Big House, I meant to, I've been trying to contact you because you're on a higher tier. You have access to my Discord and um, I either need your email address or some way to get in touch with you so I can give you the link mm -hmm. to my Discord. Um, my Discord is really slow right now but uh, I'm sure it'll build up over time. But um, when, whenever you get a chance, DM me. You can DM me on Instagram or something. Um, I need to get in touch with you though, so I can give you a link to the to the Discord. Anyway, thanks for making it. Um, Hamid says, anytime you deserve it. Thank, thank you, man. I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, so let me see here. Um, the XL model for 900 bucks. It's still, that's so expensive. I actually have uh, some Pixel 4 news today too. So uh, I'm going to talk about that. Max is saying, also, I'm doing a Kahoot game tomorrow on my YouTube channel at 7.30 uh, Central or 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central. What's Kahoot? How high? I know I've heard of that. 
it'll be about smartphones and it'll be lots of fun. Cool, man. Thanks for uh, sharing that. Maybe I'll take a, well, no, actually at that time I'm doing a, a live stream with Will, <laughs> but um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Big House, you'll hit me on Twitter. All right, cool, cool. Okay, guys, uh, let's get into the stories here. So my first article is going to be about the LG Velvet. Um, let's talk about this phone. Today it got released. It got unveiled. And uh, it's no surprise because we've already seen the photos. We've seen what it looks like in real life. And uh, here, here's my thoughts on it. The LG Velvet is a good looking phone. It's a really good looking phone. Uh, it does look like it's of premium quality, but um, the hood under the hood, it's not as premium quality. It's like, um, it's like buying a Ferrari. I, I'm not, I, I'm not up to date with, uh, I'm not up to date with car stuff anymore, but maybe it's like buying a Ferrari with like, you know, I don't know, a Ford focus engine. That's, that's going a little too low, but you know, you know what I'm saying? It, it looks nice on the outside, but I don't know how well the insides are going to run, but it's still going to come at an expensive price because the LG velvet, this is a nice looking phone. It really is. I actually love the colors of these phones. And, um, I haven't read this yet, but let's let's kind of go into it. The LG Velvet has finally officially launched. The LG Velvet has finally officially launched in South Korea. Following weeks of teases and announcements, they've they've pretty much unveiled everything beforehand. We got all of this news beforehand. As expected, the phone features a quote raindrop triple rear camera array powered by a snap. Uh, Dragon 765 and a 6.8 inch OLED display with a small central notch. So it's a super tall phone, still a great looking phone. Details about its global launch are expected to come later this month. LG has taken such a gradual approach with the reveal that we knew practically everything about the Velvet already. We did. They just went, you know, nuts and just leaked everything. Um, the South Korean electronics giant showed off its name and design in sketch form back in April, then announced its processor along with additional details the following week. We also knew the specs of its cameras, display, and battery uh, thanks to a blog post published late last month. So it has a 48 megapixel uh, main camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide, 5 megapixel depth sensor, and a 16 megapixel front facing camera. And it has a 4,300 uh, milliamp hour battery. So big battery, nice display. It says here fast and wireless charging, has a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, has quad DAC for audio. Um, it's, it's pretty jam packed with specs, except for the processor except for the processor, uh, eight gigs of Ram, 128 gigs of internal storage. It's IP 68 water, uh, and dust resistant. And it has an in-display fingerprint sensor, whether that's good or not. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Uh, it supports styluses. And we saw that in the video, uh, on the stream I put a couple days ago and it, and it can use LG's dual screen accessory. So it has, it has a ton of stuff. I think the only thing that's missing is its engine its engine, its chipset. It's just not high end. And, um, it's going to cost 700 bucks. I think, uh, they said when this translate, when this translates to us, it's about 730 or $735, but it's going to cost this much 899,000. I don't know what this symbol is. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not up to date with that, but it's going to cost that much in South Korea. So it hasn't announced pricing. Um, Outside of the country, LG tells us it's planning to make an English language announcement later this month. So hopefully in the next week or two, uh, then we'll see what it's going to come out in the U.S. But if this is any indication, is it going to be 700 bucks in the U.S.? Is it going to be 699? Is that going to compete with a OnePlus 8? Because think about that then. If this phone comes out at 699, then would you rather buy an LG Velvet or would you rather buy a OnePlus 8? Let's say you let's say you had to buy a phone and these were the only two phones you could pick. Would you would you rather get a OnePlus 8 with a Snapdragon 865 in it or would you rather get an LG Velvet um with a Snapdragon 765? They're both going to have 8 gigs of RAM, they're both going to have 128 gigs of internal storage. Um but this has IP68 water and dust resistance. Um the LG Velvet's also going to have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. It's going to have wireless charging, so it's going to have a couple more things that the eight six or that the OnePlus Eight won't. But for me, I feel like 
I don't know. I need that performance. I want to make sure I have the 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 best chipset. And if I'm going to be paying the same price, I don't know. I feel like at least for me, it's a no brainer. If I could only pick one of the two, I would pick the one plus eight, even though I really wouldn't spend $700 on either one. I was really hoping for, I was hoping for a $500 price point, I think at the most at 499, because that's what I was hoping the pixel five would be priced at. But, um, yeah, I don't know. That's really all I have to say about it. I don't know what you guys think. Oh shit. Um, Will, uh, Will became a new YouTube member. Will, thank you, man. Uh, I hope, I hope I wasn't trying to pressure you. I was just trying to tell you that this was probably a better deal than Patreon because you get to use a uh, certain emoji. Oh shit. Will's a predator. Okay. Uh, you should download discord, man. Uh, we can chat in there and, uh, yeah, that'll be fun. I, I still have to get other people on there. Um, but yeah, uh, Will, thanks, man. Thank you for the support. Appreciate that. Uh, real quick, guys. Uh, the reason you see Will or Big House or Mint Arcade or Brian, they're all members now. That's why they have green next to their name. That's why they have a red Chicago star next to their name too. And then they get to use certain emoji. Uh, I'm just going to, prompt this because somebody joined. If you want to join this channel, um, you can just click the join button and you can do it as cheap as uh, four or 99 cents a month and you get those kind of perks. And then there are more depending on what level you get. But yeah, you can just click the join button if you want to do that. Um, obviously no pressure either. If you can't find that join button, you can just go to youtube.com forward slash phone Jerome forward slash join. I'm going to be trying to do more as far as members and whatever. Like if that starts to grow, then maybe I'll do uh, live streams where it's only member only chat or whatever, or I don't know yet. I have a, there's a lot that I can do. And, um, anyway, will, thank you so much, man. Thank you for that support. Uh, I do appreciate it. Thanks, man. Um, thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks so much, everybody. Um, okay, let's move on guys. Let's get into the, Oh shit. No, let me get into chat real quick. I haven't even seen chat. Um, let me see here. Uh, Hamed says, do you think having a mid range processor is that bad? So, okay. That's a fair question because since I've never owned a 700 series chipset, it's it's hard for me to just say outright that, you know, it's not a good buy. But here's the thing. I, I think at $700, you have to think about what's out there in terms of competition, right? Um, so it might not be bad. It might be really good. It might be serviceable, but is a 765. I don't think a 765 outperforms 2019 Snapdragon 855 chipset or 855 plus chipset. I think the 855 still beats it. The only plus that a 765 has is it gives you 5G. I'm sure there are other small things in there, but I think in terms of pure performance, I think the 855 is still, um, is still a better performer. And here's where I'm going with that because you can get a OnePlus 7T right now, brand new for $499. And would you rather pay $500 for a faster performance chip or would you spend $200 more for a 765? That's kind of where I'm going with it. That's how I look at it. And that's also why I'm saying with, with a Velvet pricing at $700, you can get the OnePlus 8 at the same price. So it I, maybe it depends on what you want, right? If you know you're only going to keep the phone for a year, then maybe it's the better buy because then you get some of these extra things. So here's here's the other thing is look at look at OnePlus right now. My OnePlus 6T still flies. It's still really well performing and it's an older chipset. And I am pretty sure that the OnePlus 8 or the OnePlus 7T that you can get for $500 now is still going to perform well two years from now. Will the LG Vel Will the LG Velvet two years from now with the 765 chipset? I don't know. It might, but I don't know if I want to take that chance. At least right now, I don't know if that's the best buy. That's kind of where I'm going with that. Um, <laughs> I said best buy. That's something in one of my later articles. Uh, Will says here, I won't mind it in the Pixel 5 uh, battery. If the battery life is better, that's a good point too. It also depends on how well it performs. Hamed, I'm sorry, I forgot you had another. <laughs> I kind of think it's more than enough for me. What's your take? Yeah, uh, again, it, I think it really depends. I, I bet you it would be serviceable, but would you rather take would you rather take a 765 and pay 200 extra dollars, or would you rather take an 855 chipset and pay um, 200 dollars less? 
I, I, I mean, I, that's, that's kind of where my head goes with it. That's kind of how I think about it because money is still a big factor here. I mean, it might not be for everybody, but for me, money plays a big part in my purchases. So, um, okay. Let me scroll down. Um, yeah, uh, big house. It was, it was released today. That's kind of why I was talking about it. And that's, that's why I was like going through a bunch of that stuff. Um, Okay. Well, I got a red star. Yes, you did, man. Uh, looks like a lot of you guys have red stars now. Uh, Levin says I would get the one plus eight better performance for the price. Yeah. That's kind of where, um, my head is going with that. Uh, <laughs> but Google doesn't brag about speed. So they'll charge eight 99 for the pixel five XL. You want to take a bet on that? Well, we should, we should make a bet on that. Whenever this quarantine ends and whenever I meet you in real life, uh, in person, we should take a bet on whether that's going to be eight 99. Cause I don't think, I don't think the pixel five XL will be eight 99 shit. I could be wrong. Oh, I could be wrong because if the velvet's going to be 700 bucks, then so will the pixel five, um, or not 700, 800 shit. I don't know. We'll see. We should take a bet on that. Will we can, we can do a burger bet or we could do a pizza bet or whatever. Um, okay. <laughs> Let me move on, guys. Let's uh, let's talk about this next story. And uh, it's about Best Buy. And it's about the Pixel 4 XL and the Pixel 4. Um, just a real quick thing here. Uh, the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL, uh, you can get them for $350 off right now. Obviously, there's a small caveat here. And, um, and I think it has to do with activation under Best Buy. So if you miss a chance to buy the Pixel 4 when Best Buy discounted it to $450 last month, you now have another opportunity to pick up Google's latest flagship at a compelling price. So you can get the Pixel uh, 4 with 64 gigs of storage uh, for $450, which is a pretty decent deal. It just sucks that the 128 gig model is $550. I think this is a ripoff. Um, but maybe at this point, 128 gigs for 550 isn't that bad. Uh, but you have to activate it at Best Buy same day. Um, I don't know how that works. I don't know if that means, so like that means you have to create a new line. Like I can't just take my SIM card and throw it in there. And yeah, I'm guessing that's what they mean by that. I just thought I would share this for anyone who might be interested in a Pixel 4 or a Pixel 4 XL. So the Pixel 4 XL right now, if you activate it at Best Buy today, you can get it for 550 and the 128 gig version is 650. I still think that's overpriced. Um, but yeah, just thought I'd share. Uh, there's not much more to say with that. Uh, I guess this last sentence had something in here though that says, uh, yeah, of course, a big reason the Pixel 4 is 350 off um, is because it's a flawed phone. Battery life, particularly particularly on the smaller Pixel 4 is mediocre. Um, motion sense, that's uh, where you can wave your hand in front of the phone to skip a track or whatever. I think it's really gimmicky at this point. Um, I really think they need to add more things to it, but, um, it says you can be hard. You'll be hard pressed to find a phone with a 90 Hertz display and a camera as good as a pixel fours for 450 to 650. So they have a small point there, but I guess at the same price, you can get a pretty good camera when the pixel four, a comes out, that's going to have a very similar camera to the pixel four. And, um, you can get that for 400 bucks. So, but, but yeah, for 450, it's not bad for 64 gigs, but uh, again, battery life is going to be, eh, so you might think about the Pixel 4 XL. Okay, moving on. Uh, this is actually about media tech, and this is something that I covered yesterday. The, uh, well, not I, I covered a bit of it yesterday, but the release came out today. So this article from Android Police is talking about media tech revealing its Dimensity chip. So they have a Dimensity 1000 chip that's supposed to be their flagship. And now they uh, made a new one called the Dimensity 1000 Plus. Here's the thing about this Dimensity chip is I don't even know where they put <laughs> this chip in their phones. I don't know if the Dimensity 1000 is even being used in any phones right now. And whether that's happening or not, maybe maybe internationally, but I haven't seen it here yet. So today, MediaTek announced a slightly upgraded version of its Dimensity 1000 chipset, appropriately called the 1000 Plus. It's light on changes with only a handful of improvements. While there may be more uh, minute technical changes, we're told there are essentially three differences. It supports up to 144 Hertz refresh rates. So uh, compared to 120, 
uh, it has a Hyper Engine 2.0 with improved resource and networking management and new MiraVision video enhancements to enhance details in video playback, including SDR to HDR. Um, MediaTek says devices based on the upgraded Dimensity 1000 Plus will be landing, quote, soon. I don't even know where it's landed on the 1000. However, given how long it's taken for the base Dimensity 1000 to appear in phones, exactly, we might be in for a wait. So who knows? I have I have no idea. Okay, moving on. This article from uh, GSM Arena is talking about the Realme X3 Pro uh, with a Snapdragon 865, and it might have been spotted at Antutu. So Realme seems to be working on a second Snapdragon 865 powered phone um, as an unseen RMX 2072. Uh, posting a score of over, of, over 600,000. I don't really care about these scores here. Um, is there anything else on it here? It's going to have UFS 3.1. This one will use the older, oh, a Realme X3. Okay, so the X3 uses an 855 plus. This uh, X3 Pro will use an 865. Um, there's no word on screen size. So it says Leakster Ice Universe is hinting that this is a gaming phone. So there may be more to the phone. Uh, a higher than 60 hertz refresh rate uh, is a given as the X2 Pro and X50 Pro both have 90 hertz screens. That and the flagship chipset is enough to make this a great phone for gaming, but there may be something more. Whether it's a gaming phone or not, the Realme X3 Pro could be related to the phone that leaked at the end of April. I don't know. Do any of you guys own Realme phones? I've never owned one. Just thought I'd share since uh, it's another Snapdragon 865 chipset in here. So, okay. Uh, let me go back in here. Uh, Will says, where are the new emoji? Yeah, there you go. You got it. You're using it. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. I missed that was earlier already. Um, Big House is saying, I'm using the Motorola One Zoom with the 675 and it runs great for what I need. I'm not a gamer. That's good to know. I've actually been kind of like not really talking much about 600 series chipsets just because I, so I had the Moto G7 and that was a phone that Mike had lent me. Uh, Mike is simply your device. Uh, one of the, another tech YouTuber and, um, or ex tech YouTuber. I don't know where Mike's at at the moment, but, uh, yeah, I, the G seven was okay, but I experienced lag on it and I just wasn't too thrilled with it. And so that's why my, I have hopes that the 700 series is going to be better, but that's good to know that the, that the 675 is still doing what it needs to do. Um, Google has to keep up with Sammy. So $800 plus very true. Ah, God, just, way more than it needs to be. Speaking of Samsung, uh, this article from Tech Radar is talking about how the Galaxy S30 may be the best camera phone of 2021. <laughs> I don't believe this for a second because the S20 was supposed to be this grand phone with great camera specs. And while the camera I bet is good, it's even great. I don't think it tops an iPhone 11 Pro. Maybe it's on par with 11 Pro. Maybe it's on par with the Pixel 4, but I don't think it's the best. Um, and so this is saying the Galaxy S30 may be the best camera phone for 2021. I haven't read into this, so let's get into it. It seems only months ago we were reporting on the Galaxy S20 leaks. Um, the megapixel main camera, whopping guys, whopping, but we know it doesn't really make a difference. At time of writing, there are no 150 megapixel smartphone cameras on the market. Who cares? It, this is something I've said before. If if the 12 megapixels are competing, who cares about 108? Who cares about 48? Who cares about 64? Who's printing poster size photos on their camera phones? Maybe some people are, but maybe those are the ones that you guys need to cater to. Like let people know like, yeah, you can print your poster on here. No one's printing a poster. Like who's printing a poster on their camera phone? If anyone is printing anything out, it's usually professional photographers who don't need to use their phone to do that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, one possibility though, is that this super high res sensor could be included on the Galaxy S30 Ultra. This is a fluff article. I don't really, there's, 
I shouldn't have pulled this out. If Samsung does decide to max out all the cameras on the S30 or whatever it ends up being called, it could end up being a true smartphone photography beast. Whoever wrote this is just, it's no. Uh, and, and totally, and one that totally wipes the floor with the S20. I just, it's kind of, it's disappointing to read this because I feel like you're, you're putting this article out here to, um, to clickbait, but then you're also, um, you're, you're, you're misinforming your audience. You're misinforming the people who really find this stuff important because a galaxy S 20 is a thousand bucks or 1200 bucks or 1400 bucks when it's not even the best that's out there and maybe something you can find comparable at a cheaper price. I don't know. I just, I think that's a disservice. So I, I feel shitty reading it because I just, and then we have another tech radar <laughs> article. I just don't like that article. I just think it wasn't really, don't be calling it a whopping beast of a smartphone or camera phone because it's not, it really isn't. Um, but I have this other article, <clears throat> sorry. I have this other article from Tech Radar saying all all iPhone 12 models look looks to set all iPhone 12 models looks set to have 5G but it'll be limited on some models. And I don't I wasn't even aware of this, but maybe this is something that is another fluff article that I don't know about. I haven't read it yet. John Prosser, uh, an analyst and tech leaker claims to have heard that all four are going to have 5G. We read about that before. Prosser notes that his current information suggests the two cheaper models um, won't be uh, won't be sporting millimeter wave 5G connectivity. Okay, so I didn't know that. That's that's good to know. Actually, where you live will determine whether this matters to you. Um, so it's split between two technologies. We know this millimeter wave 5G and then sub six technology, which is the slower technology for 5G. This means millimeter wave 5G is only being used by certain carriers and technology. For example, Verizon's 5G network is entirely based on millimeter wave. That likely means that the cheaper iPhones won't work with 5G connectivity on that network. There aren't any networks in the UK currently using millimeter wave 5G. So it's unlikely to affect you if you buy a cheaper iPhone 12 there. According to Prosser's information, the two higher end models will work with millimeter wave uh, 5G technology. That's no big surprise. So if you're interested in the very top speeds, you'll likely need to opt for one of those models. Um, the source's information in the past few weeks has also been accurate. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Just a quick snippet in there. That's uh, not really too surprising. Okay. This next article from, what is this? Android police, Android police. Yes. Uh, is talking about <laughs> the next one plus flagship could switch to super fast 65 watt charging. So right now they have, what is it? 30 watt charge. And whenever this next one plus phone comes out, the one plus eight T, uh, this is the feature they're probably going to add onto it and it's going to make warp charge. 30T obsolete. So recent OnePlus phones have been all about speed from snappy performance to speedy charging tech. Um, the company is so absorbed by this notion that it waited a long while before introducing wireless charging to make sure its implementation, not even the 8T, it's probably going to be on the 8T Pro, right? Because they won't put it on the 8T. The company's warp charge, previously dash charge, has been, wait, no, this is 65 watt. Yeah, no, it'll be for the 8T. Okay, sorry. Um, so they've issued a certificate for a OnePlus charging brick that can push up to 65 watts of power, 6.5 amperage at 10 volts. By comparison, the company's current Warp Charge 30 is rated for 30 watts of maximum output. Okay, so let's see here. If OnePlus's solution ends up being anything like Realme's, you can expect a 4,000 milliamp hour battery to top up completely in 30 minutes flat. That's, I mean, that really is, that's incredible speed to charge a phone with that much capacity. 4,000 milliamp hours. My, um, my iPhone SE that I have, I was doing tests with it and, uh, that has an 1800 milliamp hour battery and to charge that on its five watt charger took me over two hours and to charge it on its uh, fast charger, the iPhone 11 pros fast charger, 1800 milliamp hours. That took me an hour 40 plus to charge. So to see that you could charge it in 30 minutes, I mean, that's great. 
Um, when or if OnePlus will bundle its phones with a 65 watt charger is still a bit of a mystery. It's entirely possible that the AT uh, could include the wild new charger or the company may choose to wait for another generation to iron out any remaining issues. A 60 watt charger could also be offered as a separate purchase at a later date. So yeah, I mean, it's cool. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I would love to see it come on phones, but, uh, it's also not the biggest deal breaker for buying a phone. Like when I buy a phone, I'm not saying, well, it has to charge my phone in 30 minutes. I mean, I'm not trying to knock it at all. It's, it's awesome to have, but what is this? And actually we were talking about this. I was talking about it while Will and Brian were talking about it, but what is this going to do for price in terms of the next one plus eight T is that $700 price point now going to be 729? 749 because it's going to have this in here is um the one plus at pro going to be you know 829 or not 829 929 949 just it's just yeah i don't know i don't know <laughs> okay uh let me let me <laughs> let me catch up here will says lol john processor i know god damn it i i that's what i always think of when i see that um Brian says, uh, I've been catching the streams in, oh, okay. Brian's, Brian's doing work, doing work. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 1820 milliamp hours. The, the, my, my, one of my biggest knocks on the iPhone SE is how small the battery is and, um, how bad the battery life is still pretty comparable to the pixel four, but I think, um, at least the iPhone SE has really good standby time and I can't say the same for the pixel four, but yeah, uh, sad is that's a good way of putting it really. It is. Um, okay. So, so let's continue on here. Um, I'm going to save that maybe for another day. Okay. Uh, this other article I have from nine to five Google is Samsung and Google are working to bring RCS to galaxy phones. <sighs> Who uses RCS in here? Anybody? The only reason I've used RCS is because Will um, got me to use it and I've never, I've never used it. I only used it with Will to test and uh, I don't know anyone else that uses RCS. I don't. But uh, it looks like Samsung and Google are working to bring it to Galaxy phones. Um, RCS messaging has had a rocky rollout so far, but Samsung and Google are now teaming up directly to enable the rich text messaging service on more Galaxy phones. And I'm not trying to knock RCS. RCS is great to have. I just don't know if it's going to be widely adoptable, if it will ever be widely adoptable. Um, and that's why I've been sticking to things like Telegram because Telegram, I don't know. I love Telegram. I think it works great. I, I love using Discord. I think Discord works uh, great. I think both of those are good. But uh, Samsung announced that the partnership with Google to bring RCS messaging to more Galaxy smartphones officially in late April, uh, alongside YouTube optimization for the Z Flip. However, it's not clear just when the wider rollout will benefit those already with Galaxy smartphones. I mean, if anything, uh, yeah, maybe bringing it to Galaxy phones is going to be good because there's a big user base for Galaxy phones and putting RCS there will get people with, uh, you know, pixel phones to use RCS. And maybe that will be the start. Maybe that'll be the, the adoption of RCS. Uh, but you know, Apple's not going to jump on board with RCS. I, I don't see that happening. You know, they, they're busy with iMessage and they've been working that for so long and it's been working well. And for them to adopt RCS, I think that would just affect what they're doing in their ecosystem for iMessage. But I could be wrong. Who knows? So it's also worth noting that Samsung wants to bring RCS to its own Samsung Messages client. Uh, the Korean firm also claims that the tech duo has been working on integration since 2018. Uh, so some of you may be aware that Samsung Messages has actually supported RCS for a few years on certain global carriers and supported devices. However, this is huge news it could as it could massively increase the uptake of RCS across the entire Android space, which is what I was saying. Of course, the user base for RCS currently relies on OEM shipping with Google Messages as the default SMS client. Downloading the app doesn't necessarily work on Samsung devices. Expect to see cross-platform RCS support come to Samsung Galaxy smartphones over the coming months. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Um, 
Okay. Uh, yeah. Brian says no RCS here. Um, <laughs> six says two, six, seven is why you like telegram. That's not true. Although I'm not, uh, I'm not opposed to, to really good, uh, two, six, seven clips. Um, does RCS support Giphy? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you can send shit. I don't know. I don't know if it does. <laughs> if not, I'm out. I, I wouldn't be too worried either way. I just feel like, uh, well, whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, moving on, guys. Uh, let's talk about uh, the MacBook Pro. Actually, so a couple of my friends on my live stream a couple of days ago jumped in here and actually had a question about the MacBook Pro and what I thought about it. And uh, I really had no, um, I really had no thoughts because I'm not shopping for a new MacBook. Uh, I do have one back here, um, and this is a 2015 MacBook Pro, and I bought that used from actually one of my friends that popped in there because he ended up buying a new MacBook, and I bought this 2015 MacBook Pro for like 400 bucks, and it still works really well. Um, and I have to give it to Apple for for still providing a good piece of hardware even four or five years down the road that I can still use. And uh, I mean, it sucks for video editing, but it still works. Uh, I've actually been able to edit some video in a pinch, but I can edit uh, photos in there and that works pretty good too. So, but let's talk about this. Do you, do any of you guys own MacBook pros or do you guys are, are any of you guys just PC people? Cause I've been a PC person for my entire life. The first time I used the MacBook pro was about a year and a half ago. That was, that was the first time I actually used a MacBook pro and, um, I had to use it for work at the time. It was the only thing that we used. It was, it was Apple only, but, uh, I got the hang of it and I ended up, you know, liking it pretty, I was pretty happy with it, especially for an older MacBook. Uh, I, I thought it worked pretty well. And, uh, so here's the thing is they're, they're expensive. I just don't know. Um, I just don't know if they're worth the money at this price, but this article from Engadget is talking about the 2020, uh, MacBook pro, uh, and it's a 13 inch, uh, model. I had a feeling I'd be reviewing a new 13 inch MacBook pro sooner rather than later. When Apple refreshed the MacBook air back in March with a new keyboard, I knew it was only a matter of time before the company did the same for the 13 inch pro. Um, as you'd expect a MacBook pro refresh also means updated internals. The 13 inch pro is, so it starts at $1,300 now comes with 10th generation Intel CPUs, which is good. Nice to see, uh, the 10th gen go in there and new Intel Iris plus graphics on select models. The entry level now has double the storage at 256 gigs. The higher end configurations also start with 16 gigs of Ram instead of eight. And there's a 32 gig upgrade option for the first time on the 13 inch model. So it has a much improved keyboard, uh, display is nice, double the base storage, healthy battery life. Cons bottom side can get hot. You have to buy at least the, oh shit. You have to spend 1800 bucks to get the 10th gen. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you gotta be rich for, for the newest, uh, the latest and greatest. No discrete graphics option on the 13 inch model. So there's no USB a ports. There's no SD card reader that kind of sucks. So my, my MacBook pro, my 2015 has an SD card reader and I use it all the time to edit photos. Uh, still not feeling the touch bar. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, I had someone when, when I worked with him, he had the newer MacBook pro and it had the touch bar and I just, I didn't, I was like, it looks cool, but I, I don't see the point. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe there's a point to it. I just don't use it. So, uh, the 13 inch MacBook Pro is the third and last laptop in Apple's lineup to receive an upgraded keyboard. I've heard good things about the keyboard. I think that's the one thing people talked about the most was the keyboard is really good on it. Um, meaning those much maligned butterfly keys are now a thing of the past. Um, I'm not going to read this entire thing. I'm not, you know, I'm, I use my laptop cause it's serviceable, but I'm a PC guy. I have right under here, under my desk, I have a, $2,500 PC that I built from scratch. It's uh, something I used to do back in my uh, tech days, my IT tech days. For you guys that don't know this, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, I worked in IT for over a decade. I was, uh, I was a technology consultant. Uh, I worked at O'Hare Airport. I handle all the hardware uh, at the airport. And I'm not just talking about PCs, but uh, when it came to PCs, it would 
you know, it would be like upgrading software, replacing like life cycle stuff, you know, technician kind of work, but I also dealt a lot with, um, networking. So that's what I went to school for was networking. And so, uh, anytime the servers would go down, that was me, you know, uh, putting, putting in, uh, servers, like building new servers. I did that kind of stuff too. Redundancy. Uh, it was, it was a fun job at first. I really enjoyed doing it, messing with, uh, messing with switches, punching down stuff, even in terms of like, uh, telephony. So PBX boxes and whatever. I, I know I'm probably talking too nerdy here, but, uh, I did that for a while and I really enjoyed it. And, um, building PC stuff was, is still kind of a joy for me. It's not the same. It's kind of why I quit. Cause I kind of got into photography and videography instead. And that's where I'm at now. But, um, yeah, uh, I, you know, I just want a good laptop and, and the MacBook Pro has given that to me, but, uh, let me see here. Um, I'm just performance. I'm sure performance is decent. Uh, I just feel for people who need to use it for video editing. Cause that's a lot of money, you know, that you're spending, uh, on a phone, on a phone, on a laptop. Uh, so there's competition XPS. I'm just looking at the wrap up here. Cause I'm not going to go too long into it. The new 13 inch MacBook addresses one of our biggest complaints with the last gen model, the frustrating typing experience. Yeah. That's what I've read too. People, people talk about the keyboards on here. Now the smaller MacBook pro is that much easier to recommend retina display speakers, touchpad, battery life, and overall performance rounding out the mix. The case for choosing the 13 inch MacBook pro over a competing windows machine will be tougher, at least for someone who's open to either to using either OS. Other machines offer some combination of lighter weight, longer battery life, discrete graphics, or better on paper specs for less money, which is usually the case when it comes to a MacBook Pro. Um, so yeah, even 10th gen Intel chips at a lower price point. For shoppers who have been holding out for a new MacBook Pro with a more usable keyboard, you can upgrade now, confident you're making a good choice. For folks in the market for a portable machine with decent graphics and long battery life, the 13-inch Pro is just one of several strong options available right now. I mean, and, and I'm also assuming for people who just need a laptop for just everyday use, I'm sure this is going to be a laptop you could use for years down the road that's still probably even going to hold its value. Um, Okay, so let me scroll back up here. Oh, Will saying you can. So, okay, that's good to know. Um, yeah, so Hamed, uh, my 2015 MacBook Pro. So I have the same one, still going strong. Uh, <laughs> strong is an exaggeration. Oh no, mine's been pretty good. I, I don't have complaints with it. I don't game on it. I don't, um, I don't, I've edited video and that was rough. So I'll give it that. But as far as web browsing or whatever, I think it, I think it does the uh, same job. Uh, yeah. Six is saying I bought a MacBook pro 2017 for 700 bucks and I enjoy it. That's great. Um, Mint Arcade says uh, MacBook pro works great as a no fuss personal computer. My late 2013 MacBook pro also my first Mac OS still works just fine today. That's good to know. Touch bar is still a gimmick. Apple not willing to put it to sleep. Yeah. I I've seen it and it, it looks cool at first, but I just, I haven't really seen the point. I haven't seen the point um, on a phone. I know my, my head is always about phones and I'm trying to like, I'm trying to broaden and start talking about other things, which is what I did when I first started streaming. But some of these things just don't appeal to me as much as phones do. I always have, I don't know. And, and you guys know this at first I was kind of out of that phone game and it hasn't excited me the way it has lately. Again, it's kind of exciting getting back into it. And I think it's because of the mid range race, the, the $400 phone race. I think seeing that has really sparked that interest back in me because it's more affordable. It really is. Um, Ishrock Mirza, Ishrock Mirza. Hey, Ishrock, uh, appreciate you joining the stream. Appreciate you stopping by. Anybody impressed with the games that they showcased? Only was interested in Yakuza. That's about it. Uh, I actually haven't seen what I, I you're you're talking about Microsoft, right? Uh, or Xbox? But uh, I haven't I haven't seen that. But uh, I'm glad you mentioned it because I'm going to be talking about that today. Um, Six was saying, yeah, it was on swap a mint. I could not pass it. Yeah, seven hundred bucks for a 2017 is a really good price. Uh, yeah, Xbox Ishrock saying, yeah, I haven't um I haven't seen that, and I'm not the biggest gamer, but uh. Well, actually we'll, we'll get into that. So, but before I get into that real quick, guys, for anybody who just came to the stream, uh, I, I haven't even said this today. Uh, 
please guys, if you haven't, feel free to like the video. Liking the video helps me in some algorithmic kind of way. I think really what I'm trying to say is I think it helps people find the stream, helps people get in here, talk and chat. If you guys are um, sitting watching the stream and you're not engaging in chat, I mean, that's cool, but like, feel free to say hi. I think we're a good community. I think we like to talk to people and see what's going on. I think it's a good way to just uh, join and, uh, you know, engage. Um, if you guys haven't, feel free to subscribe. I stream Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. Central, although that's been coming later and later, and I'm sorry about that. Um, and then real quick, if uh, if you guys haven't, if you've noticed in the chat, some people have green next to their name, some people, ha and, and they'll have a red Chicago star next to their name, and that's because they're a member um, on my channel. And to be a member, to get those perks, it only starts at 99 cents a month. With those 99 with that 99 cents you get that right away and actually you also get custom emoji to use and now that i had a couple new members come in today i can actually add new emoji so i'll be adding new emoji um today as well so even if you guys have recommendations on certain emoji let me know and i'll think about putting those in but i think i'll get access to put two more new emoji every time new members come in i get to add more and more emoji which i think makes it fun and as a member you get to just use that there are different tiers though at five dollars you get access to my discord at ten dollars you'll get access to like watch my videos before they come uh, live, like my camera comparison videos and things like that. Uh, you can just click that join button or you can also go to youtube.com forward slash phone Jerome forward slash join. And uh, I'll leave it at that. That's my little marketing spiel. <laughs> and uh, we'll get back into Xbox actually. So um, this article have I have here, sorry, that's just a picture of the Xbox, is uh, this article from PC World. And I, I have owned an Xbox for a while. I owned the original Xbox, and then um, I've owned every single one after that. And I've owned it, and then I've sold it, and then I've owned it, and then I've sold it again. And then I ended up building my own PC, and I'm just like, I'm just going to game on Steam. But there's always a small part of me that always wants to go back to gaming. Even though I know I don't have time lately, I, I want to go back to gaming. And And seeing this article from PC world saying why Microsoft needs an Xbox gaming laptop. Here's the thing is I don't, I don't, I don't even own a TV anymore. When I moved to LA, when I moved out to California, I sold all my stuff and I didn't even buy a TV. I just ended up using my computer monitors for everything I needed. And then, uh, if I just wanted to like relax, I would just lay in bed and use my phone. But to think, man, the, the thought of, and it, and eventually I would love to get a TV again and like, you know, have my own apartment and do all the things I used to do when I was making good money. But, uh, with everything going on right now, that reality isn't anywhere close to my radar. And the thought of actually having, uh, a laptop that can play Xbox games, I think is a really good idea. I mean, the, the new Xbox that, Microsoft put out is already pretty much a, a gaming PC. And I don't know, they, I feel like they could just convert that into a laptop and I would be so down for that. Um, whether it would put windows on it too, that would be great. But, uh, I don't know, you know, the Nintendo switch is a, a great portable device. And I think there would be a big community of people that might buy a laptop version of it. So let's talk about this article. You know, this is an opinion piece, but uh, this is from PC World saying why Microsoft needs an Xbox gaming laptop. Xbox isn't just for consoles anymore and a dedicated gaming laptop would let Microsoft flex its PC gaming muscles. I completely agree. It's a big week for Microsoft. Yesterday, it introduced an army of enticing service updates. Today, an Xbox event introduced the first batch of next-gen games. I'm going to have to check that out because I haven't watched it yet. Um, I'll have some time today, actually, so that'll be good. Coming to the Xbox Series X console launching this year. But what I want is something that straddles those two worlds and solidifies Microsoft's position as a driving force in gaming. And yes, that includes PC gaming. I'm going to put my bias here right now. I, I don't, <laughs> I, I, and I'm like pulling on this because I'm about to show you something. I, um, I am an Xbox guy. I've owned a Nintendo Switch and I sold it. And it's not that the Nintendo Switch wasn't good. I enjoyed it, but I really just didn't use it often. I have always used Xbox more often than not. And I have never, so I've never owned a PlayStation except like the original. I've never owned 
anything. I think the PS1 and PS2 were the two that I owned. I've never owned anything after that. And I know there's a lot of Sony guys and I'm not a Sony person. And one of the reasons that I'm not a Sony person is, is this, um, is the Xbox controller. So yeah, I, you know, I, I don't have an Xbox, but I, I play on PC and I play rocket league. I have, um, this is going to be very embarrassing to say, but I have over 2000 hours of gameplay in rocket league, 2000 hours, guys, you can do the math. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, I, when I had an Xbox, I also had rocket league on there too. And, um, I miss a lot of games on the Xbox and I would love to buy another one, but I just don't see myself sitting on the couch as often as I do anymore. I would love to play, uh, with an Xbox on a laptop. I think that would be awesome to kind of just carry it around, play a game or two. I don't know. That's me, but let, let, let's continue on with this. Um, pretty much what I was saying is I don't, I showed you guys the controller. I don't know if I mentioned, I don't, I don't like the PlayStation controllers. I think the Xbox controller is so much better than the PlayStation, which sucks because so like I'm, um, I love playing games like street fighter. I love playing games like Mortal Kombat, and a lot of those have started to become more exclusive on just um, PlayStation instead of Xbox. And I, I'm not so I used to be a first person shooter kind of game FPS player, but I was never an FPS player on Xbox. I played all my first person. Uh, I played all my first person shooters on PC Counter Strike. I played Doom. <laughs> I'm showing my age. I play the original. Here's the thing. I play the original Doom game, the original Doom and Doom 2 games on a 56K modem. That's how old I am. I used to play that back in the day. My friend and I figured out using Telnet how to connect with a 56K and play Doom 2 multiplayer together. Uh, back in the late 90s, we would go to LAN contests where we would have like four to six uh PCs connected together and we would have doom two tournaments like a $20 bot. That shit was so fun. That's, that's my, those were my gaming days back then. Um, and then I used to do arcade games back then playing mortal Kombat, street fighter. It's yeah. Uh, very nerdy that way. And it's been a while. It's been a while. I don't think I've shared that with many people. Okay. Let's, let's continue going on here. Um, I want an Xbox gaming laptop. Me too built with the same attention to detail as the surface lineup, but focused on highlighting the best of Microsoft's gaming innovations and what's possible on the PC. Uh, diehard PC enthusiasts may scoff. It's hard to look past the epic failure of games for Windows Live, but hear me out. Under Phil, uh, under Phil Spencer's stewardship, Microsoft Xbox division has doubled down on PC gaming, including new features that improve the lives of PC gamers, even if they aren't aware of them. And a lot of that is even just cross-platforming gaming, which I'm very happy about. A lot of those benefits are intrinsically tied to the underlying DirectX 12 graphics technology shared between Windows 10 and Xbox, but there's more than DX12 at play as Microsoft works towards uh, leveling up everyone's gaming experience. So before, before real-time ray tracing could debut in, in NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 20 series graphics cards, Microsoft added DirectX ray tracing to Windows. Okay, this is more technical stuff here. Um, Xbox Games Pass for PC is the best value in gaming today, offering over 100 games for $5 a month. Even the Windows 10 game bar kicks ass now. I don't know much about it. It's really been a while, guys. To pave the road for the Xbox Series X's ray tracing support, a recent beta uh, made Minecraft a new gold standard for ray tracing. Ster seriously, it's stunning. I'm just trying to read what else they're talking about here. It's more technical um, than anything else. And I just, I'm not too knowledgeable. It's been a while since I've gotten into it. So I just want to see what his other um, kind of... Uh, what am I trying to say? His evidence for having one is an Xbox gaming laptop could come clad in black, mirroring the Xbox Series X's branding while standing apart from Surface's traditional silver hues. Loaded up with NVIDIA's ray tracing capable GeForce RTX graphics, of course, or AMD's eventual RDNA 2 GPUs, integrate wireless Xbox Xbox controller connectivity, Microsoft's advanced surface camera, and the dual far field mics would work wonderfully for Twitch or Mixer streaming. I'm getting hot and bothered. 
<laughs> that is such a nerdy. I'm getting hot and bothered just thinking about the idea of Microsoft's luscious pixel sense displays amped up to game ready 120 hertz plus refresh rates. If Microsoft really wanted to get crazy, it could even make an Xbox gaming laptop stand out from the gaming notebook cords by integrating support for the fantastically fast Xbox Velocity architecture add in SSDs debuting in the Xbox Series X. Um, there's no shortage of gaming notebooks available and Microsoft's PC partners probably wouldn't appreciate if it if the creator of Windows encroached even further on their turf. Done right, however, a dedicated Microsoft gaming laptop would leave no doubt that yes, Xbox matters for PC gamers too. Toss in a free subscription to Xbox Game Pass for PC for a few months and it'd make one hell of a statement as the vanguard for Microsoft's PC gaming ambitions. You know, like Surface does for Windows. I, I have a hard time disagreeing with him there. I, I know he gets real nerdy and excited about it, but I can't blame him, especially if he's a gamer, especially if he's someone that's so into it. I would love, I would love to see a portable version of a high-end console. I mean, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Um, okay, let me let me go back into uh chat here. Um let me scroll up. I know that was kind of long about uh gaming but uh yeah i don't know i thought it was pretty i thought it was pretty interesting um ishrock i see a phone question here but i'll get into that uh in a second um let me move down here uh so ishrock says though turning it into a laptop kind of defeats somewhat of the purpose of well a console that's, I mean, fair point, although I'm not sure if Microsoft is heading to that non-console view of their gaming systems. Yeah, I'm not sure. Mint Arcade says this generation of console may be the last. The line between PC and console is getting thinner. I mean, it's it's also to mention the fact that, you know, we're, we're in a more portable world these days. Look at, I am not a mobile gamer because I cannot, I can't use mobile for gaming. I play real dinky games on mobile, but for those people who are really getting into it that even use a controller and stuff, I just, I, I get it, but I would rather have something like a gaming laptop. I'd rather pull a laptop out than use my phone to, to do that. But that's, that's me. And, and I'm not, I'm not trying to discredit what the mobile gaming industry is doing. Cause that's great. But I, I, what I'm trying to say is there is, I think there's a market since phones are so portable, since people play on their phones, people would definitely play on their laptop laptops. And imagine giving that processing power in a laptop. I think that would be great. I really do. Um, <laughs> Six says, damn Jerome, you just became my best friend. LOL. The moment you said Xbox, I've owned a lot of Xboxes. The last Xbox I owned was their premium version that came out and I'm already forgetting the name of it. But, uh, I got that on day one when that came out and I had owned another Xbox before that one of the earlier versions and sold it. Um, and then I, God, I can't remember, but it was all black and it was stealth and it had, I don't know. But yeah, I remember getting that one and I barely played it because I just I just didn't have time. But I would definitely buy a portable one is what I'm trying to say. Um, OK, let me let me scroll down here. Uh, I still have the Duke controller. If you remember that, I do. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. It's, it's funny to see you guys talk about gaming here. Um, I haven't played FPS for 12 years now. Sacrifices were made. Work PC is greater than play. I, I hear you, man. Um, Ishrock says, still a gamer. Um, <laughs> it's nice to see you guys talk about it. It's nice, to, it's nice to be able to talk about more than just phones, right? And, and talk about some of these other things here too. Um, yeah, so Mint Arcade says, Microsoft can really have Google's lunch money if they work on a Stadia-like platform. Not fully cloud, but pick up anywhere playing from console and Windows PC. Also, they have a huge library. That's a good point to make. Um, Ishrock says, well, for me, at least the reason why I purchased a console to begin with is for exclusives. That's very true. There are a lot of people who are buying it just for exclusives. Games like Halo and Gears are moving to PC and it's hard for me to really purchase it as I already have half. Yeah. Uh, I was also a big, um, car guy. So I bought all the Forza games. And back then I, I even bought the steering wheel and the shifter and the pedals. And I bought all the high-end ones. I was really into it back then. Um, yeah. Mint Arcade says, uh, mobile games are mostly ads disguised as games, which is really annoying. And also microtransactions, which is, Oh my God, I actually have an idea for a game and I, um, I've been keeping it for a long time, the idea in my head for a while, but I, I, 
I've been trying to find a developer, someone I can work with, but it's just so much money. But that's for another day, guys. All right, let's go back up here. I'm gonna. <laughs> I really got into that. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to scroll and talk about some of these other questions because I I did see some other questions about um, about phones and stuff. So I'm going to get into that uh, really quick. Sorry, guys. Right now, I'm just trying to pull something up here. Um, just give me one second. OK, so let me scroll back up. Um, I know Ishrak had a question uh, that says, do you generally recommend getting a MacBook and an Android phone? I have a Note 9 and a MacBook Air and there seems to be a disconnect and maybe I should have gotten an iPhone because mainly for half, um, for half ecosystem. Oh, but I mean, otherwise that is pretty much the same thing. I like my MacBook Air, but I think Android and Windows might work better. Okay, so... I'm in that same position. I'm in that same position. And uh, I'll, I'll share you, I'll share my experience with you. With my MacBook, I don't use things like, I know that a MacBook can sync with like iMessage and Chrome or not Chrome, Safari and all that kind of stuff, but I don't use it. I don't. Um, you know what syncs with my messaging is Telegram. Do you know that when I use Telegram, if I'm typing something on either my iPhone or my um either my iPhone or my Android, and I have Telegram open up on my MacBook or my PC, that message is also getting relayed to all of that. It's pretty much in sync. I, I understand what you're saying about the ecosystem, but I'm actually a person who doesn't use Apple's ecosystem the way that I think other people do. I, I, I know that once you get in that ecosystem, it kind of traps you in there, and I try to not be too... <sighs> too trapped in that system. I do use a lot of Google services though, like Google Keep for my notes, um, Google Docs, and, and just a lot of Google services, but you can get all of that on Apple already. They're all available on there, so I don't have an issue with that. Uh, I the reason, the reason I use a MacBook Pro is because uh, I was able to get that for 400 bucks it's a five-year-old, four-year-old laptop that still works well as far as web browsing, as far as just surfing the net, surfing the net, web browsing, doing light tasks. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I, I used to own a Dell XPS 13, and then I owned, this is how this is how much I wasted my money, guys. I bought a Dell XPS 13 for like $1,500. And this was when I was working IT and I was making big money when I was making good money. And uh, yeah, I bought an XPS 13 for like 1500. And then I bought an XPS 15 for 2200 bucks. And I owned both of them for a while. For whatever reason, why? Just because I had money for it. That's that's how that's how wasteful I was with my money. I've, I've learned a lot since then to not be so wasteful. But um I, I didn't like the experience on my Windows laptop as I do on my MacBook. I don't know. The MacBooks just seem a lot more refined. Maybe it's different today. It's been two years or three years since I've had that XPS, but um, I really I really like what my MacBook gives me. And even though I don't integrate those systems, uh, maybe it would be more... Maybe it would be more beneficial if I integrated everything, but I don't. I'm just not that kind of person. So... Um, that's it. That's kind of how I feel about it. So yeah. Okay. Um, let me scroll down here. Uh, I see why 2019. Hi. <laughs> hey, why? How's it going, man? You're a little late. I'm about to end the stream. It's, uh, it's, it's coming to that hour, man, but I appreciate you. I appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate you being in the stream. Uh, the Dimensity 1000 plus is here. That why that was my second story today. You should have been here earlier, man. <laughs> Just kidding. You can watch the replay when the replay comes out. Uh, I did. I did talk about that. Um, okay, scrolling down, scrolling down, uh, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, <laughs> Ishrak says here. Uh, oh my God, I'm trying to tell my family to use Telegram, but they have an iPhone, so they use iMessage. It's really frustrating. You're gonna have a hard time moving anyone away from iMessage. Uh, even though Telegram has such good features. The only feature right now that I wish that Telegram have was uh, being able to like hold down on a message and like a message or heart a message or, you know, you know uh, what do they call that? The React messages that, that iMessage has. I miss that. Otherwise, Telegram has such good things. Like, did you guys know that I could take, well, you know what? I think I noticed that from our tech chat that I have is, I, what I love is I'm, I'm able to take a message that someone's given me in a different chat and forward that to another person. Um, 
so that I don't have to copy and paste the link. I can just be like, hey, someone else showed me this message. Take a look at this because there's a link in here. I think that's an awesome feature. Um, Telegram has a lot of features that I wish other, other apps did. Um, but yeah, uh, Brian says here, I wish Telegram would allow SMS. Yeah, that would be awesome too. Uh, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but yeah. Um, okay, let me scroll down. <laughs> you guys are talking about uh, gaming. That's great. I love seeing that. Uh, okay, uh, Y is saying here, um, there are rumors of a Mi 10 version with the Exynos 990. Good to know. I still have to refresh myself on Mi phones. Uh, I know Y is a big uh, MediaTek guy. He's a big um, Mi person as well. Um, that's something I'll have to do a little homework on. So yeah. Uh, okay, guys, I think that's it. That's my stream for today. I'm an hour and 10 minutes in here. Uh, real quick before I go, if you guys just came in, feel free to watch the replay. If you haven't liked the video, please like the video or the stream. Uh, liking the video helps me, I think, find other or helps me find helps me get other people to find the stream. And uh, it also helps talk in the chat, get other people to come in here, talk about things, uh, engage, and uh, just be part of the community. So I do appreciate it. Um, and then uh, one last thing, guys, if you haven't, uh, if you see in the chat, some people have green names with a red Chicago star next to it. That's because they're a member of my channel. Um, being a member, you could do it as cheap as 99 cents a month. It'll get you that red star. It'll get you that green thing. Uh, that green name, and you can use a specific emoji, and uh, you just get to be part of the community and you get to support. So if you haven't, there's a join button for that as well. And uh, I think that's it, guys. I'm going to leave it at that. Tomorrow, I am going to stream earlier. I promise you that. It won't be as late. Oh, shit, real quick. Um, <laughs> Brian with the dollar super chat. Brian, thank you so much. Brian is still continuing his streak of super chats. Uh, one day I'm going to sit and go through it. Brian has, I think, super chatted like 30 something, 30 something times in a row, if not longer. But Brian, thank you so much for the support. Uh, thank you for also uh, being a... Um, being a member of the, the YouTube or my channel. Thank you for also being a moderator. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Tomorrow, I am going to be on earlier. I promise. Before 12.30 p.m. Central, at least. Um, and uh, that's it. We'll talk about more news. Maybe we'll talk about other things. If there are other topics you guys want to cover, talk about it too in chat. That's something I will eventually get into. We'll talk about, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep growing this community and we'll keep growing, which is, I think, an awesome thing because we can just talk about chat all day or we can talk about tech all day and just get to know each other and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just, I'm talking too much here. Here comes the outro, guys. Uh, thanks again so much. Have a good one, guys.